why this is important, um, I love my Wildcats. Uh, feel free to follow along at tttt.roku.com. Yes, you're probably going to type one too few or one too many, but you'll get it right eventually. Um, this presentation was, extensive, was originally called Tiny Tools, Tiny Tests, just because, well, I like the, um, oh shoot, I forget the uh, literary device, someone else can call it out. Alliteration, yes, yes, that's it. Um, I'm gonna, before I say anything else, I'm point out, I, I like it when people uh, interact with me during the presentation, so that way I'm not doing all the talking, I'm just going in here, I'm an extrovert. So feel free to ask questions. Don't, you really don't have to tackle you guys back there, but uh, if you feel so uh, inclined. So this presentation was originally intended to be trashing and testing tools. Um, <laughs> So I guess I, I should have asked the question before I said this. So which of you guys out there love cucumber? Come on, I know you do. Yeah, we do cucumber. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> exactly. It hurts. It hurts. But um, I made my peace with it uh, in the process of preparing the presentation. I did a bit of research. I talked to a lot of people. I thought, thought, thought about this, and so. Tolerance for tools triumphs in the end, but we'll get there eventually. So who am I? My name is Evan Light. I've been a developer for 15 years, blah, blah, blah. Coding in C, C++, Java, I'm sorry. Perl, I'm sorry again. Ruby, um, I've been test obsessed for quite a while. And my first taste of uh, being test obsessed came from Jamie. Again, forgive me. Um, what I'm here to talk about, yeah, maybe we need to make that font a little bit smaller. How about that? Uh, what I'm here to talk about is um, holistic navigation or um, mindfulness, forgetfulness, and simplicity. So when I say Dirk Gently style navigation, um, who here has read Dirk Gently's holistic detective service? That's not bad. I've tried several times, I can't get through it. But uh, I got through enough of it enough times that I, I read the bit where when Dirk gets lost in his car, he just follows other people around because surely they're going someplace interesting. And so he'll get where they're going, well, he'll see something interesting. So this is sort of how my, um, my TV education really began. I started uh, back in, in Java Hell. Um, Java, of course, as you may already know, is statically typed. So when you want a TDD, you, you, you write your test, but then you have to write a little bit of code, or you can't compile, you can't test anything. Blah! So we get into Ruby. Um, I went to RailsConf in 2007, and uh, someone introduced me to RSpec. And I thought, hey, this is cool. It reads like English. I can just write the test first. Great. David Chlinsky, who's the primary maintainer on it, he writes some really great blog posts. If you haven't read his blog, well, there's a link in the slides. Again, you have access to the slides, click away, enjoy. Um, he write, writes all kinds of great posts about, well, he calls it DDD. I think it's a loaded term. I just like calling it all DDD. But um, he writes some great educational posts. Also, I didn't link with uh, Jay Fields, who um, worked for ThoughtWorks for a time, now also works with uh, David Chlinsky. Uh, has some really great ideas about testing back when I was learning up on TDD. So those two together, plus talking to other people, plus making lots of stupid mistakes on my own, um, helped educate me a lot in TDD with RSpec. Right. Then I found a RSpec Story Runner. And a Story Runner was the first Ruby tool, at least I was aware of, that, that provided even when then syntax in Ruby. And with the intent of an intent of facilitating outside in development, or I think as David was calling it, then started calling it acceptance test, uh, ATD, ATD, um, or ADHD, or in any event. Um, so the point being, you, you test how your application works from the outside in. If all you get all the features, you have all of your user stories captured as features in our story story record, they all pass, hey, your application works. Um, this flies a little bit in the face of what Brian Helmkamp was talking about yesterday, um, to a degree, but, but that's not saying you don't write any unit test. So that's, that's a different matter. So I got to test unit eventually. Um, and I found ultimately I liked testing more than I liked RSpec. I didn't think I would. It read too much like Java, for the API at least. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys can say that you actually looked in test unit in the, the Ruby 1.8 implementation. Really, that's it? Okay, so um, if I say that the code's really ugly, am I guess you nodding heads? Okay, I see at least one nodding head. Uh, yeah, the uh, test unit implementation is really pretty hideous. If you want to do anything to it or with it beyond use the API, not much fun. Um, in fairness, Nathaniel Talbot was the author who wrote it um, just after he converted to Ruby. So it looks 
things like Java code written by Ruby as well. But and yet it was in Ruby 1.8 for quite a while. But um, the API is really simple, and the learning curve is really short, and that was one of the reasons it was appealing. So I was working with some new Rubyists. Uh, they were certainly very new to doing test first, and especially very new to doing TDD. So better that than, than trying to teach them RSpec. Um, but then Cucumber came along. And uh, Cucumber, uh, did, how many people here use Cucumber again? Let me see those hands again. Yeah, okay, so you guys know what Cucumber is. For everyone else, it's an external DSL. Um, that means it's a language that is not Ruby. It's not Turing complete. That means that you can't, you can't solve any arbitrary computational problem with it. It is specifically designed for you to express requirements, which then map to regular expressions, which then map to blocks of code, which then actually try to test something. If that sounds like a lot of indirection to you, that was the impression that I got from it. I tried using it, I really wanted to love it, and it just pissed me off. Um, so, slides anyway, um, for any of these testing tools that I described, how many of you guys have looked in slash lib for those gem, for those gems, for RSpec, you looked at the implementation? Cucumber, anyway. Okay, not too many people. Um, what I point out to you guys is if you're doing more than the most basic, well, let me ask a bigger question. How many of you guys have TDD on a regular basis? Be honest. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well done. How many of you guys are really TDD? Mmm, see where hands go up, okay. Um, well, that's fine, that's okay. I mean, for me, for me, testing has really been kind of an obsession. Um, it's made me a much better engineer um, without writing my test first, especially, but then without TDD, my designs aren't as good. I have a lot of bugs. I recommend you guys focus on it more. But all that said, you should really look at how these tools work. A, there's, there's a lot to be learned. B, you might see that there are things in there that you don't approve of and makes you not want to use them quite so much. But there's more to that. We'll talk about that a little more in just a minute. So I talk about being mindful. You've seen this quote before. Uh, Wayne mentioned it. You know, when you create things, you become defined by your taste rather than your ability. Your taste only narrow. So create. Well, I really didn't like Cucumber. And I bitched about Cucumber for a bit. And I thought, well, fine. I should just go try to make something. So when should you try to create something? Wayne was talking about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, when you have a complicated set of steps performed that you're performing repeatedly, well, that, that's the beginning. Um, the one that, that I add really is uh, when you're using an existing tool, but it doesn't feel right. This is when I'm talking about mindfulness. When I'm working, I try to pay attention to, well, among other things, how frustrated I am at any given time. Um, I once saw Brian Merrick retweet something, I wish I could find it, really, where he said essentially the, uh, the life of a programmer is seven and a half hours if you're working an eight hour day. Is seven and a half hours a day of a computer telling you you're an idiot, punctuated by 30 minutes of, of gratification. <laughs> and so if you're working with a tool that's making you feel like an idiot on a regular basis, it's possible, it may be quite likely, it's not you, it's the tool. You might want to consider that. Don't necessarily blame yourself. So maybe you can do better. Um, the other point that I make is that we, we have a bond with our tools. We invest in our tools. So if you're using our spec your project or Cucumber as a project, how easy would it be for you to switch over to a completely different testing frame? No, not easy. I'm sure some of you have tried. I know some of you have tried. If, you've got, if you're using testing already, you use RSpec, you want to convert all your specs, that's very expensive. Usually, in projects I've seen where they try to do that, you just leave all your old specs in place, you run that rate test, you know, that, that rate test, you run the new rate test, and you run both test suites. Well, that's great, but it's not particularly maintainable. So, I wrote this CUDA thing because I didn't like Cucumber. Um, I wrote it for me, a few other people have found it to be useful, and it makes me feel good, but it's, um, Cucumber, Cucumber tries to be a B2B tool to help you communicate with your customer, that help, ostensibly to help them write your specs. And most of the time when I work with customers, I end up talking to the customer, I write the spec, I might get them to approve the spec, or I try to get them to approve the spec, and then I build it. So in that case, I need a tool that's for me. Cucumber is not aimed really at us. It's aimed at the people 
we're working for. So I don't really need to go into more graphic detail than I could have. You can look, at, there's a link to it uh, later in the presentation. You can go look it up if you want to. That's not the point. The point is, this presentation's about you. Why aren't you writing your own testing tools? <laughs> you could roll your own. It's really not that hard. You probably spend a lot of time. I want to see a show of hands again. How many of you people spend at least half your time writing tests? Okay, that's at least a third of the audience. If you're spending that much time writing tests, if you have any discomfort with the tools you're working with, why don't you try to find, or do you try to find better tools? Or maybe, maybe you should think about making your own? It's the whole notion of if you spend so much time, so much of your day away from doing your job, and you're doing a job that you hate, why are you doing that to yourself? That, that's, like, that's like punishing yourself. Ruby's supposed to make your life easier. So building a testing tool is not particularly hard. There are about three different things to it. You need to be able to define a test. You need to be able to create a environment to run the test. And then you need to be able to define an assertion mechanism or an expectation mechanism to say, well, this thing should do this. And so, uh, so it's really very little stuff. So um, a few nights ago, I wrote this little crummy thing that you can probably barely read, especially if you're watching the camera. Uh, uh, it's particularly called Edit Test, and it's 42 lines of code. So uh, it's the answer. It's clearly, you all should use it. No, I'm kidding about the answer part, though. But um, it's 42 lines of code. It's not particularly pretty, but it has failures. It has, it has errors. It has an assertion mechanism. It has a runner. This is not hard. This is something everyone, I think, should try to do. Um, just because you should realize that a lot of tools we use, at least the basics, are pretty simple. So, a trend that I noticed for me, in terms of my TDD journey, is I started by following the community, again, that Dirk Gently approach. I wasn't sure where to go. I started looking at what everyone else was doing. I did that. I talked to people. I observed what they were doing. I tried mimicking, and then I adapted. I experimented. And then, ultimately, I got to a level of sophistication, at least, I, that where I felt the need to improvise a little, to try something different. And then that seemed a little familiar to me, um, skipping ahead a little, that that seemed to me like the Dreyfus model of skill acquisition. Um, have you guys heard of this before? Can I get some hands or something? There we go. Okay, so some folks have heard of it. Um, this private crop book, there's also a link. No, I don't get any money for it if you buy it. It's not any one of those. But uh, this is uh, the private crop book, private activity and learning. Actually, Joe spoke about it um, and, uh, six months ago when you talked. Basically, among other things, talks about this uh, model of skill acquisition where you have, where you are a novice, you're a, uh, I can't remember all the steps. But the point is, it's a process of becoming, going from a novice to a master, supposedly. Or at least they use the term master. And you start off by growth, and then ultimately you end up needing the freedom to improvise. So, moving on, forgetfulness. <laughs> what I remember of testing, this is what I basically use a testing on a day to day basis. Four methods, maybe. Um, assert, assert equals, assert instance of, and occasionally assert match. I almost forgot that was in there. Um, and if I recall testing, this probably got you know, 10, 15 different assertions. Uh, when I used RSpec, I used should and should not, and really I used three different kinds of matches equal, not equal, and then all the dynamic ones. That's it. So, thinking on this, there's another trend here. I remember what I use. I don't use very much. I forget everything I don't use. So the Pareto principle here occurs with me here. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with it, it's just the principle that says that 20 percent, the majority of the work is usually done by 20 percent of something. The other 80 percent does the remaining 20 percent. So does the minority of the work. So I'm using maybe 20% of test unit. When I was using RSpec, I was using maybe 20% of RSpec. Assuming I am not unique and special snowflake, I imagine that this applies to you as well. <coughs> so that means that testing tools could be 80% simpler, potentially, than they are right now. And also, that people who write tools really like to solve edge cases. Now, 
that might be a euphemism for saying that people who write tools tend to really like to write complex tools. We like to do everything, right? We like to make everyone happy. But it's not necessarily the, it doesn't, it's not a simple approach. Um, this Mr. Feathers wasn't around earlier, but he had tweeted yesterday that simplicity is a cognitive load in code thing, not a code thing. Reason I forget, at least, so much of the APIs that I use is because remembering all that is more cognitive load. All the files that I have to deal with in the applications I work on, that remembering them is cognitive load. All the classes I deal with, it's cognitive load. Remembering which test, test which class, is cognitive load. Remembering which integration test, test which user stories, more cognitive load. We've had a lot of crap that we have to remember on a day-to-day -day basis doing our jobs. That's tough. So why do we need these really complex tools that try to do everything? So what's the right tool? And then this was just an attempt to provide a cutesy given when then example of defining. But really, for a testing tool, you need uh, you need the ability to to you need a tool that will help you design things, or you need a process that will help you design your application, that will help you communicate the features that you're trying to build, and that will obviously allow you to actually test those features. So just going through those in a nutshell, we're talking about that in a nutshell for design. The technique is more important than the tool. You know, RSpec, test unit, cucumber, shoulda, well, shoulda is some bad tool, but whatever. If you've ever studied martial arts before, and obviously it's been a while since I have, but if you've ever studied martial arts before, you've probably seen, you've probably heard or experienced that, that as you improve, the people who get really good at it, they might say that in the end, it doesn't matter which martial art you master, as long as you master one of them, because they kind of approach the same place. Control. <laughs> so it's more about the, it's more about the technique than the tool. It's more about the technique than than the particular art. But in terms of picking a tool, if you were a beginner, then the, picking a particular tool may help you. And the reason for that is. Is that if there is a strong community behind a particular tool, if you're new, you can learn from that community. Like I was mentioning earlier, as far as, as far as the process of skill acquisition, it's very hard to teach yourself, but if you have good people to get examples from, you can learn from those people. If so, in that case, while I was giving everyone a hard time about cucumber earlier, cucumber to me makes sense. Our spec to me makes a lot of sense, especially for people who are new to testing, who are new to TDD because there are other people in that community there to support you. You start to go in on your own, pick um, less common tools, write your own tool, you're going to be a lot more on your own at that point. So getting back to talking about communication, I'll throw past this real fast. Um, your testing tool is also a specification tool if you're trying to TDD. So if you want to bear in mind, who am I writing these specs for? Am I writing them for me, for my dev team, for my boss, for my client? Um, it, it's really important. Who is writing those specs? Am I writing those specs? In my case, I usually am. Do I have a customer or QA team who's writing those specs? <coughs> so, we already have this wonderful language called Ruby. It's why we're all here. Um, but we have these tools that try to obviate a lot of our need for Ruby, that they try to provide a complete solution so you never have to leave their, their magical DSL in. Um, and but I contend that, again, the 80-20 rule applies, that you could use a much simpler tool, and then that other remaining 20% of the work, you could do it yourself. It's just Ruby. So my suggestions, choose a testing tool, choose one that you're comfortable with, play with it, find your 20%, if you can, improvise the remaining 80%, or possibly write your own tool. So, Trying to wrap up, while I talked about testing tools, this is really an allegory for a larger concern of mine. This is not just about testing tools. Most tools in the Ruby community, unless they're implemented to, unless they're trying to implement to a specification, to one exception I think, most tools in the Ruby community try to do too much. They try to encourage you to, to work just within their constraints. That we can, that we should expect a little bit less from our tools and maybe we should just make a little bit more effort in our own. 
don't try to don't try to use your whole tool. Maybe try using just a little bit of it. Try not straining your brain remembering things, but improvise just a little bit. Play a little bit. Um, so Mott's tools can still be powerful. You can build everything. All the assertions it tests you, you can build every one of them just using a cert. Basically, everything, every most everything in our spec, you can build with should and should or should equal and should not equal, basically. And then to extrapolate a little further. I think a really good example is Unix itself. That Unix is a bunch of small tools that play together around a larger kernel. Ruby is essentially our kernel. We have a bunch of really, we have some really small gems, but then we have a bunch of really big gems that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe we should have our nice big kernel that's really awesome, and a bunch of little tools that play well with each other around it. So, I'm just going to say in closing, uh, I also um, curate and run this uh, Unconference Ruby Decamp that's at the end of September uh, this year in the Washington, D.C. area. It's a one-day code retreat. If you don't know what a code retreat is, I'd gladly tell you about it later, or you can Google it. Um, in two days of Unconference, it's actually, oh my god, outdoors in the big blue room. And uh, it's, comple it's completely free. Uh, food's provided for. You actually sleep in cabins, so no, you don't actually have to sleep outdoors. Um, so if you're interested in it, you can go Google it, or you can talk to me about it later. Uh, I've got some links here for additional reading if you're interested um, for various diff different testing frameworks. Um, I suggest you might want to look at the APIs, might also want to look at the library, I mean the uh, slash lib. And then just uh, usual thanks. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys got something out of it. If you have any questions, uh, you can hold them back. Those of you who are still awake, because I know it's been a long time. Wayne! Um, so you said in earlier that the Evan test No, I didn't say it as insertion, sorry. Oh. And, that, and, you're, and you're trying to heckle me with reference to cucumber, aren't you? <laughs> no, no, I think when it, insertion, no, it has it as, it has an assert method, that's it. Oh, assert. Assert, assert, yes, right. <laughs> Cursing isn't funny. Oh, right, that's why there's a little bit of getting in the audience. Um, <laughs> anyone else have a question, comment? No. Yes? testing tool and you should write your own web framework. Now whether or not you use them in production for every mm -hmm. application, that's a separate question. That's so right. But it's very educational. I mean and another example, I wish it was recorded, but uh, Charles Max Wood did a great presentation for the web conference where basically he wrote a mini Rails framework entirely on top of rack for demonstrating how it would be done in the, in the context of a 45 minute presentation. I wish I, I need to do that personally. I don't know how to do that on top. Anyone else? Comment? Question? No? Wait, there's a hand. Oh, there's a hand. Sorry. Bart. When I've done TDD, what I find is um, I, I, I find myself spending so much time doing it. And like you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, I, I get a little discouraged with it emotionally. I, I want to get back to making stuff. And you mentioned the most important thing is not what tool you use, but your but technique. Do you have any personal experience that you'd like to relate about, uh, let's say, uh, a point at which you just went too far and you decided, no, I've got to gotta chill it out with how much I'm writing tests. Or what, or just talk to your ideas about technique on writing Oh, goodness. Um, that's a different presentation. I, I actually did a talk. seconds or less, please. Can you repeat uh, the question? Yeah, OK. The question was, I was pointing out how um, we should pay attention to our, inner, to our frustration level. 
And the, the sorry, your name? Brett. Brett? Yeah. That, that Brett was, was remarking that he, when he gets so frustrated with his testing that he just wants to stop. He wants to know if I ever got to a point in, in working on tests where I needed to dial it down because I just felt I had gone too far with it. Um, I remember uh, this company where I, I first adopted the test unit, I got the habit of writing macros on a very frequent basis. When I say macro, I really just mean class method that gets invoked. Um, that where I, usually class method, sorry, sometimes it's a method, but just trying to encapsulate um, repeatable steps from tests. And when I started to get two or three levels deep in macros, I knew I was in deep trouble. <laughs> because I, when I couldn't unravel my own macros, I knew that was a problem. You, you want your test to be maintainable, you want it to be able to look at a test and know what it's doing. If you can't do that, you do something wrong. And at the same time, when, for me, when I'm writing a test, if it's not immediately, if it's not immediately obvious how to test a particular piece of a particular class, a particular component, um, either it means that I'm dealing with a problem I've dealt with before, or that I probably did something wrong earlier, and I need maybe I need to readjust. But I'd be glad to talk more about it later. The old presentation, like uh, 2009, when I was like, whoops. Sorry about that. A lot more clueless. Like when I dropped my mind. Well, I guess that's it. Thank you.